Okay, so I've got the wings, and I'm just trying to scale the wings correctly. So they look kind of small and dopey, but they still work with the anatomy of the, the rib cage, the collarbone, you know, the shoulder blades of my reference. And already this is looking like it's just one reference, you know, even though it's the pelvis of one creature and the chest of another. So once I find the scale, that's just using the basic transform box that that exists when you bring the file in from your references. You hit return to place it. You always keep it as a smart object when you are sizing it. And that's because your smart object file, like if I bring something else in like this one, the smart object file is referring back to the original file for its resolution. And all it's showing in Photoshop or PhotoP, as it's a smart object, is a preview of those pixels, you know, that, that space, that image. That's all it's doing. So if I want to make a big change to the pixels, like to cut it out, I have to rasterize it. But I don't want to rasterize it until I've sized it as a smart object, because that's going to give me the best possible resolution. If I rasterize it first and then grow it larger, that's going to really weaken my resolution more than it needs to be. It will make it blurrier. So what do I do? Once I have it kind of roughly sized and rotated, then I can roughly cut it out. It's okay to have too much because we'll erase it out later. Okay, Command J. Once I duplicate it, now I have a copy of it that's rasterized and I have the smart object, but I can delete the smart object. Now I'm going to do it with the other bird wings. And these bird wings are much more believable, but they don't have the cool color. So it's a tough, a tough choice, honestly. Because I like this shape. I even like the little tassel from the head that maybe I can incorporate with the neck. And it's kind of like the talons. Which ones do I choose? Right? So my problem with using these, and I'll show you very quickly to get a sense of how they'll come into the back, I can go to this reference. And I can just use my eraser and trim it a little bit, right? So I like how those wings look. Let's see, where are my other wings? But I like the color and kind of the boldness of these wings and that these look a little goofier. So I might hold the other wings just in case. But I think I'm going to go with these. Now I haven't done any color correction yet, any dodging and burning, anything like that. I'm just trying to kind of pick my elements. Okay, next is the tail. Now this is tricky, and I always do it last because it has to flow from the spine. So this seems like the most tail-like element I have. And I've got plenty of size, but I need it to kind of flow from the spine, right? And if I warp it, which I can still do as a smart object, I can even get that kind of movement from it like I have in my sketch, which I wanted. But I need to rotate it so that it flows from the spine. And that's pretty effective as is, but I have these other things to use if needed. 
and I think they're just going to confuse it. So if I wanted a split tail, how would I do that? Well, what I would do is let's cut this out, just a rough cut. Command J. And now I'm going to use the smart object and I'm going to make a second one. So maybe I even, actually, probably be smarter to just bring in the asset again. And then shrink it. And then warp it a second time. Instead of just copying and pasting what I already did, I want them to feel like they're similar to each other in a set and that they're even lit the same way but using transform that they come from the same spine but they're not just copy pasted from each other right so they have a lot of variation so now I'm going to take that one and I'm going to rough cut around that Command J, I can delete the smart object. So now I've got two tails. And this is an easy enough tail to cut out because it was on a blank background. It's actually on a, a blue sky background, which acts like a blue screen. So I can just use my lasso with contiguous turned on at 32 tolerance. Select that background. It gets almost all of it, right? It just missed a few little pixels here and there. That's why contiguous is turned on, so I can hold down shift and add those in. Now it's a clean cutout. And if I want to be really, really precise about it, I can hit delete right now and get right at the, uh, the pixel level. It will cut between pixels. Or I can click on select and mask and feather it just a tiny bit. So I'm going to feather it one and a half pixels. I'm going to take the radius down to, to two pixels. Say OK. And that will soften my selection a little bit. So when I delete it, it will just have a little bit of softness to it. And now that has a slight problem. It left that softness, but it also left it around the edge. So you can see here, if I select these pixels that were left. So there's going to be little things I need to clean up, but this is a good start. So how do I clean that up? I can just go right around it like this. And that's why I have a tablet. I don't know why I'm using my mouse right now. Because I have a tablet that can clean all of this up. I can hold down Option to erase away from the selection, and then I can clean that debris just by hitting Delete. And then how do I check it? I use my magic wand, I select outside of it, and you'll see that there's not that much debris anymore. There's just a little line of it right here. So what do I do? I use my lasso and I select around that line. And delete it. And then I can check it with my magic wand again. Okay, so that, that is cut out. Now, this tail, same thing. I'm going to delete all that blue and use the same settings. Then I'm going to say selected mask just to soften it the tiniest bit. Like one pixel feather, one and a half pixel feather. Then delete. Nice and clean. There's just a little bit of debris there. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add these two together. So how do I do that? I take the one that's on top and I use my eraser at 100% at 300% at 300 pixel size is 0% hardness. And I start to blend them just like I did with my landscape by erasing away from one. Letting, it, letting them transition into each other. So it feels more like a split tail. Right? Get rid of the hard edge. 
with 100% opacity, and then I can go to lower opacities. We'll start to kind of blend them together. I can also use dodge and burn. So something like that. Okay, now, these are on two different layers, but if I want to treat them like they're on the same layer, I can select both of them, holding down shift, and then put them into a group, and then name that group the tail. And then I can move that tail down below the other references. And as a group, as long as I have auto select group selected instead of auto select layer, or I just have it turned off and I'm selecting on it, then I can move them all together and I can transform them all together. I can do everything but warp them all together. So I can even distort them and kind of play with the perspective a little bit to get it to match. So there we go. I have a split tail that I'm going to use. Okay, next, the body. Usually I would work on the head first, but this is giving me a lot of confidence before I get to the head <laughs> to kind of get this, this whole portion figured out. So I'm going to go to the tail section of my bird's body. So I can go to auto select group, but click on here and it will give me that layer. And I'm going to select out this blue, which is pretty easy to select out. Same setting with the magic wand. And then I'm going to use the, it's appropriate here, to feather it. Cut these feathers out. And delete. Now notice there's still a lot of blue there. And there is this talon issue, right? So I want to cut this out to still show these talons. while cutting out that food. So I'm going to use my lasso, and if you notice in my tool settings, my lasso has a one pixel feather already in it. So that's going to help soften it a little bit. I hit delete, and I get an idea of this, these pixel shape, or these uh, talon Silhouette shapes. I can even cut into it a little bit to make my own shape. So I can turn that into a black talon if I want. I can just do things like select around just that talon and then go to adjustments and then take its brightness way down. Then I can even do things like rotate it. And push it back in. And I can adjust the color and everything a little bit later. Okay, so I've got that. Now the wings, let me cut those out. And in order to do that, I'm going to bring them up on top. I'm going to use the magic wand. I'm basically cutting out all the easy stuff right now that I have a clean background for. Use the magic wand, select and mask to feather it just slightly. That's why I have it remember my settings. To show you what this looks like, I'll zoom in. So when I delete, you can see the edge it gives. There, it gives a slight radiant edge. And then if I hit delete again, it will bite away one more step. And one more step. And the only problem is, sometimes it can leave a little debris at the edges. But because I hit delete multiple times, it didn't which is nice. So now the, that wing is cut out nicely. I can use my eraser at 100% opacity, get rid of the hard edges here, that overlap with the bird underneath. But lower opacity for the interior here. Now this wing needs to come out about there from this bird. 